10 years experience in the financial market and ICIC uh, Prudential is working around four years okay he handled more than 30,000 uh, investors okay and distributors in more than 1400 investor uh, investor program okay about his qualification okay he did a master's in the finance banking and insurance okay and with the certification of the financial management of the new york institute of finance okay and uh, almost uh, he conducted more than a uh, uh, seminars webinars for the investors banking sales rep, uh, representatives okay and uh, further uh, yeah he will take further discussion about this webinar for the art of asset allocation okay uh, bhavesh uh, over to you Inuka for that introduction and uh, good afternoon team so as you can see the topic is very lively today the art of uh, asset allocation almost uh, makes me uh, want to paint over here However, I'm not, I'm not a good painter, so I'll stick to what I'm good at. That is giving this particular presentation, helping you to understand why asset allocation is the most important thing right now in today's market scenario. So we will break down this presentation into three parts. First, we will understand a little bit about asset allocation. In the second part, we will see today's market outlook where we will understand why asset allocation is required. And in the third part, we will look at some recommendations, some solutions, how to go about with asset allocation for our clients. So I'm sure that everything that we do, we do it for our clients. So if you are uh, here listening today, then uh, you should get some of the other valuable insight that you can go ahead and uh, share it with your clients. Second thing is, for me, all of you are also clients. And that is the reason why for your own personal investments as well, you can look at this particular presentation and get very good recommendations. So we'll begin with the art of asset allocation. So as you can see in front of you, these are what your so-called industry experts will be discussing on news channels different news channels that come most of your branches will have some of the other uh, news channel on uh, in your tv throughout the day and you will constantly hear words like 10 year returns are too low so not to worry about it or p is too high so we need to worry about it or market cap to gdp is still under comfortable or the price to book value is high, credit growth is low, as small caps and mid caps are expensive. Uh, this is mostly liquidity which is driving the market. And these are some of the very common commentaries that you will come across on a daily basis that uh, most of these experts will be discussing. But what to take out of this commentary is uh, very difficult for everyone. Easier way would be to understand in which cycle the market is playing out today. So if suppose the market is in early cycle, it is just the beginning of a bull market, then uh, anyone who is investing in debt is an irrational investor because in an early cycle, you should be heavily invested into equity. If it is in the late cycle, then again, there could be a problem because uh, if you are investing heavily into equity in a late sector, in a late cycle, or you are aggressive in a small cap, mid cap space, then probably you are in for a very big crash or correction. If you are in a mid cycle and if you are investing in balanced kind of funds, your hybrid funds, then that is a rational investor because you understand that you still need to invest a certain portion into equity, but not completely. And that is what we are trying to understand. What is the current market signal? So is an investor in need of money today or does the investor wants to redeem the money today? Uh, if you look at a particular cycle with the changes in your Sensex or Nifty, you will see that investor redeeming when the markets are down and investors, uh, they behave in a more irrational way when the markets are up by putting in more and more money. 
over a period of time, you can see the black arrow. This is your fixed income, which will continuously grow, but at a very slower pace. Whereas your equity, which is in the blue zone, you can see there are a lot of ups and downs in equity. However, in a longer span, your equity definitely beats your fixed income market. So where do you see yourself? This is something that you need to understand. If I add asset allocation to this, so there is a fixed income arrow, you can see the black one. And then there is this blue arrow, which is the equity one, which is very shaky. There are a lot of ups and downs here. Now, if I want to see where the asset allocation will take me, then you can see the red arrow. This is the asset allocation graph, which can help me to navigate between fixed income, stability, and uh, the volatility in equity. So I want returns which are closer to equity and I want the severity of fixed income. So asset allocation can help me to get both of them. And over a period of time, it is possible that asset allocation might even beat the equity returns along with the efficiency of taking very, very low risk. So if you look at this particular graph, this is how an equity investor will be behaving or acting. Uh, 100 rupees invested if suppose equity gave a super bull rally that 100 can become 200 so there could be a 100 percent rise but during a fall there will be no cushion and just a 50 percent fall will bring the investor back to the original sum invested that is rupees 100 that is the reason why we have to keep a longer tenure when we are investing into equity because uh, there could be such ups and downs where your principal could remain the same However, when we do an asset allocation, if there is a 100% rise in the equity space, we might not rise as high as that. We might just rise 60% or 70% or 80% somewhere in that particular zone. However, even the falls will be limited. So instead of a 50% fall, if I fall less, that is at 25%, you can see I am not back to the original sum. From 100 rupees, I went to 180. From 180 after the fall, I'm still at 135. I'm not back at 180. And uh, if there is again another rise, then my next amount is coming at around 243. Whereas in the first case, it is still again at 200 in spite of generating more returns. So people mostly focus on generating more returns. They do not understand that we also need to cushion the fall because every percentage fall that does not happen is also our return that we are saving. And that is the reason why it is so important to invest using asset allocation, especially in today's market scenario. So which are the different assets where you can invest? So three major assets that we see is debt, equity, and gold. Why do we do debt? It's simple for to earn interest equity is for profitability for capital appreciation and gold is a mix of both equity and debt you can gain good capital appreciation and without the volatility of equity so i won't say it is very stable but over a long period of time again gold tends to generate a decent returns now why do we need to use all the three assets how will diversification help us? So we must have heard this word a lot, diversification. Everywhere we use this cliche that mutual funds helps to diversify. You should not put all your eggs in one basket and things like that. But why is it important? Because your diversification in different asset class will help to manage the cyclicality of these asset classes. So we all understand that equity might not be generating the highest returns every year or for that matter, even gold, or for that matter, even fixed income. So when this asset classes go through a different cycle, we can use other asset classes which are in a better cycle to manage our portfolio. So one is that we can manage the cyclicality of asset classes if we diversify, if we use asset allocation. Second is that we need to manage investor behavior also, because an investor might not get the similar returns as much as the portfolio because the investor will at enter in a different day and exit in a different day 
let us understand with an help of an example so if suppose investor has invested completely into an aggressive equity you can see the first year say uh, investor received a 7% return on 100 rupees investment that comes to 107 second year if there is a superb rally in equity a 40% rally you can see the investor invested amount from 100 has grown to 150 which is superb investor is happy third year if suppose there is a big fall in equity market this 150 will straight away go to around 67 there is no cushion there is no uh, safety there is no downside protection over here fourth year there will be naturally a rally which will be a bounce back if suppose there is a 80 percent rally you can see that the investment amount from 67 has grown to 121 which is good the recovery is good but it is not great because you had invested 100 four years back and four years later you are still at 121 only next year there is a decent return around 11 percent you end up at 135 after five years now if i just plain simple take uh, average of this all these five returns the average will come to around 16.6 percent which is close to 17. however if you look at the CAGR return that is a compounded return of 100 and it has reached 135 the actual return that investor has received is only 6% CAGR in this entire period. So I have invested completely into one asset class. That asset class has return potential, super return potential, but I cannot time that asset class. And that is the reason why many a times I end up taking super high risk, but the returns is average or even below average. If I do fixed income completely, look at the right side, fixed income type c you can see the returns are more or less predictable it is in a very small range there is less volatility your average return uh, comes to around nine percent but actually the investor has earned close to 8.7 percent which is decent because for this 8.7 percent investor did not have to undergo a lot of volatility in the first case most of the investors would exit when it falls 55 percent they would exit here when the investment amount is 67, 70, 75, 80, 90, somewhere around in this range, many of them will exit the market. So actually five years, 6.1% is also what many of the investors will not get. And that is because of the investment behavior, which we were seeing here. To manage this investor behavior, we need to use asset allocation. Because in asset allocation, you can see the fall is also quotient for example over here you can see that first year the return is nine percent from 100 it goes to 109 second year second year there is a 25 percent uh, returns so the investment amount is around 136 third year because there was a fall and there will be a fall over here as well so 25 percent fall your 136 goes to 102 still it is above 100 that is what matters to many of these investors they want the investment amount to be above principal because it is above principal you can still continue to invest and if you do that year four there is a rally you will make superb returns year five is decent you will make decent returns over a period of time average if i take plain symbol of all these returns it will be around 16 but the actual return that investor can get out of the 100 rupees has grown to 178 in five years it is approximately 12.3 percent which is much much higher than both equity and fixed income and with a better experience because over here the investor did not have to see a fall in principle this is one of the very very important thing that most of us forget to highlight to our investors. We are more focused towards generating the highest possible returns rather than best possible and most efficient returns. Now we will see some real data, some real returns that has happened in the last 15 year period so that you can understand how the cycle actually goes. So if you look at the left hand side after time period, there is Sensex returns. So that is the equity space. 
and you can see the green is the highest return red is the lowest return and the yellow is average returns or moderate returns in periods of 2008 2011 2015 16 18 sensex did not deliver the best possible returns even in 2022 for that matter whereas when we talk about gold there was a period between 2013 to 2017 where for almost five to six years gold was the worst performing asset class and in case of debt it is mostly a very moderate asset class but there are times when uh, equity and gold are generating super high returns and debt is left far behind so debt might not capture the superlative returns that you will get in other asset classes and that is what area where debt misses out but otherwise it is mostly moderate in nature so where do i invest when do i invest when should i invest into debt equity and other asset classes so for that to understand that let us see how the equity has performed in the past so many years so from if i take from 1979 has the equity been the best asset class overall yes but not every year has been great for equity so if i take equity returns into consideration for this 43 approximate years cagr will come to approximately 16 percent compounded returns and this 16 percent compounded returns looks superb however you have not received 16 percent every year consistently some rich some years the returns have been 50 100 percent and in certain years it has been negative 18 20 percent or even more so let's look at an example in between 82 1982 till 1987 the equity returns are were very very less except for 1985 where it was 101 percent but from 1988 till 1994 there was a superb rally in equity were generating very very high returns on a year on year basis from 95 till 2003 again equity was one of the worst asset classes with an exception of 1999 then there was the biggest bull market in indian history where from 2003 till 2007 equity markets performed extremely well and then came the global recession at 52 percent negative in 2008 followed by the recovery in 2009 after that equity has been more or less uh, average returns generating asset class not moving too much like it was earlier because of stable flows because of the sip book and all the other things but ultimately it tells me that every year cannot be the best year for equity there will be certain years where equity might not be the best asset class so how do i prepare for that so market goes through various phases we understand asset allocation is important because one asset class cannot be the best asset class every year so let us understand why today we are focusing on asset allocation uh, is equity in a bad condition today is it looking very good superb or what is the scenario so if i look at different phases but if i divide the market into different phases there is a burst phase where everything goes to hell and there is a recession big recession like it happened in 2001 then 2008 then there is a period where it is actually a very good time to invest because the valuations are looking good or the market has recently seen some correction for example recently during the covid period or during the flat market scenario in 2013 to 14 or uh, during 2009 after the big correction then there is a phase which is called as boom phase where the equity market starts to rally in a big way that is 2011 2017 and currently in 2023 we are seeing the same boom phase we saw this boom phase in 2021 also usually what happens in boom phase the markets become expensive and there is a impending correction which comes however if the markets do not correct in boom phase then it goes to bubble phase bubble phase is where the markets are irrational extremely expensive and from bubble phase you lose a lot of returns if you invest in a lump sum way in bubble phase 
for example in equity market it was in 2000 and 2007 when equity was in a bubble phase last is the boring phase where the equity is almost flat there is nothing much that happens like it was in 2012 currently we believe that we are in the boom phase why do we believe that we are in a boom phase it is because market returns are high which is one of the characteristic of boom phase the valuations are high and it is increasing another reason why we feel that we are in a boom phase sentiments are positive and that is one of the requirement for boom phase earnings growth are high production growth is also high so we have all the right tick marks if you look at the valuations p ratio is trading at about uh, about last 23 year average uh, both nifty p uh, on a, and nifty pb nifty pb is approximately 4.9 whereas the average is around 4 if you look at our valuation index which gives an indicator if we should invest into equity or if we should go towards debt it is towards the neutral space uh, but it is continuously rising with the rally in equity which tells me that we are near the phase where we need to stop putting additional money into equity and asset allocation becomes more and more important in this particular period if i look at the sentiments of investors you can see we are in a phase where the sip collections uh, we are getting a record sip collections more than 14000 crores on a month on month basis is the sip collection that we are getting mutual fund flows are continuously positive fiis are pouring in a lot of money since the may 2023 and even if i compare india equity flows with the other regions like korea taiwan china all these places you will see that india is getting one of the highest flows at least in the last few months from february 2023 so overall if there is too much money pouring in into one economy that can be that can lead to expensive valuations so what are the risks that we see today we see three different risks one is monsoon because the monsoon in india uh, for the year has not been great second is credit uh, so there has been a lot of unsecured credit lending and third is the different income groups in india so let us understand them in short when we look at monsoon the monsoon was doing well till the month of july it was above average however in there was a very big dull month in the month of august where the monsoon went below normal and currently it is around negative 10 percent which is not a good indicator there is probably some cover up in the month of september however it is not looking that great if you look at the district wise data you will see that uh, there is almost 37 percent districts where monsoon is in a deficit of more than 20 percent which is a super high number so 37 percent here and two percent where the monsoon is in a large deficit overall almost 40 percent of the country does not have enough monsoon which is not a good indicator second risk that we see is the unsecured credit lending because in the last five years the unsecured credit lending in india has grown by 29 percent which is super super duper high and this unsecured credit lending is usually done to the lower middle income uh, population of india these are the credit cards and these are the personal loans that we uh, see these population getting however the income of these people have not increased and that you can see with the help of another indicator how many two wheelers and four wheelers have been sold in in the country if we compare it to 2019 that is before covid so before covid you can see the uh, segment that is orange color which is the motorcycle that is 125 cc and below the cheaper ones you can see currently it is around 60 percent of the sales of what was happening uh, before covid in december 2019 whereas in the premium segment that is 200 cc and above you will see that the sales is even higher than what was happening in pre-covid which tells us that there are certain category of people 
which are definitely buying motorcycles however they are buying the premium ones the cheaper ones are bought by lower income people and that sale has not pick up even after 3 years of covid similarly if i look at the cars the premium car segment is much higher it, it has almost reached the pre covid levels but the compact cars the smaller cars they over there it is still less than the covid sales this highlights that the income has not increased in the lower segment however the unsecured credit has increased a lot and it has grown by 29% which can be a worry which can lead to uh, you can say some risk in the country so how do i manage all this risk and uh, how asset allocation helps me over here so if you look at this particular chart it says buy low and sell high that means you buy the particular security when it is trading at a lower valuation lower prices and you sell when it increases when it is very expensive and the valuations are very high so this is the logical thing to do ideally we all should be following this purchasing at a lower level selling at a higher level however it is not as easy as it sounds because there are so many questions in your mind when should i enter is it the right time when should i exit is it the right time then there is definitely psychological barriers like greed because if the markets are rallying and if i am selling i will feel that i am missing out on lot of gains whereas the opposite happens when the market starts correcting i will not invest with the fear that my my returns might get affected and that is the reason why this greed and fear does not help us to be rational in the market so we have a fund called as balanced advantage where these things are taken care of it works on a model and it has an equity range of 30 to 80% so by using this particular equity range and by doing daily rebalancing i say a prudential balanced advantage fund from 2010 from the time it, it has started working on its model you can see if you had invested 100 rupees it has grown to around 465 in the last approximately 13 years whereas in the same period if you look at nifty 50 which is in red it has only reached 453 rupees and the benchmark of balanced advantage which is crystal hybrid has only reached 382 rupees so overall if i compare all the three balanced advantage has definitely generated higher returns but over here we are not focused only on the returns it is not just about the returns we also need to look at what is there behind the returns how many how much risk are we taking to generate these kind of returns that is the primary motive of asset allocation so if i look at the equity levels balanced advantage has had only 52% equity level to generate 12.1% compounded returns in the last 13 years whereas nifty 50 is a 100% equity benchmark and the crystal hybrid index has 50% equity so close to balanced advantage but the returns are very low so that is the reason why we like asset allocation and we are one of the best amcs who has done asset allocation in almost all the hybrid products and we have done it in such a way that we can reduce the risk and still manage to generate a superlative return even beating a pure equity benchmark like this so that is the reason why asset allocation is very much important another fund that i would like to highlight is icici potential multi asset fund if you look at icici potential multi asset fund it can invest into equity debt gold all these asset classes it can also invest into real estate infrastructure investment trust it can also take covered call options so this these are options where you write a call and uh, you get a premium i'm sure you must be knowing about uh, the options and futures part now in case of multi asset by doing all these things you must be wondering 
if is it worth it to do so many things what is the kind of returns that we can generate so let us see that this is the current portfolio where you can see the equity level gross equity is around 66 percent there is gold silver there is natural gas crude oil there are so many commodities that we can take in this particular fund if you look at the net equity level however we have reduced the net equity level to around 57 percent recently because we believe that the markets the equity markets are at a higher valuation whereas if you look at debt it is approximately 30 percent today and uh, net gold is around 7.7 percent because we also have silver over here and some other commodities so total it is approximately 13 percent if i look at different market cycles say from april 2020 till october 2021 there was a bull market because there was a superb rally after october 2021 till can say march uh to till june 2022 there was a bear market because there was a correction from 61000 sensex it went down to 51000 sensex so there was a correction over here and then from june 2022 the market was flat till march 2023 so in a complete market cycle how the performance has been because an asset allocation scheme has to capture the equity returns has to provide a downside when the equity falls and also needs to outperform in a flat market so let us look at multi-asset scheme multi-asset fund on an average has generated higher returns than nifty in the last five year period 1.1 percent is a nifty average on a monthly basis whereas the scheme has generated 1.4 percent returns on an average it has captured 82 percent of the performance of nifty 50. whereas in case of uh, bull market it has done even better than nifty 50. in case of a bear market it has done better than nifty 50. in case of a flat market again it has done better than nifty 50. so overall in a complete cycle where nifty 50 has generated around 139 percent in the last five years multi-asset has generated around 162 percent so that is how the asset allocation can help you to generate even higher returns than a pure equity benchmark without taking that kind of a risk so risk is more important here we do not take high risk but still manage to generate good returns again if you look at the trailing returns as on august 31st your one year return is close to 19 percent benchmark we have almost generated double the returns of the benchmark three year returns is close to 25 26 percent which is super duper high five year is around 15 seven year is around 15 10 year is around 17. so you can see the return generated in spite of not taking a super high risk is very much high and the outperformance has been great compared to the benchmark now if you feel that we cannot do sips in such kind of a scheme then even the sip returns has been super because the fund has been generating very high returns so if you look at the three year returns the it is around 21.7 percent xra seven years around 17 percent 10 years around 15 percent and again it has beaten the benchmark handsomely so from inception if i look at the performance of this particular fund if you would have invested 10 lakh rupees in the inception that was in 2002 the current value would be close to five and a half crore rupees whereas in the nifty 50 it is even less than half of it so that is the kind of outperformance asset allocation can get you over a long period of time without taking the highest possible risk that you take in a pure equity space that is what we want to inform all all of you and all our investors that today is not about going completely aggressive into pure equity schemes it is more about doing the right asset allocation you will definitely get some opportunities into equity but there could be other areas also where you can protect the downside or generate returns so this is the entire basket of icici credential when it comes to managing different hybrid products you can see that we have various hy hybrid products covering different equity ranges from very conservative to very aggressive and then there are certain products which can 
do both primary among them will be balanced advantage equity and debt fund multi asset fund that you already know if i compare them with uh, your sensex and nifty returns in the entire market since the last time markets hit uh, the peak that was october 2021 you can see sensex has just risen 7% over that in the last two years nifty 50 has just again generated around 7% returns in the last two years balanced advantage has generated close to 15% returns equity and debt around 21% returns multi asset is the leader with around 26% returns using gold silver and many other commodities to its benefit so if i look at long term performance they are all beating the benchmark and generating decent returns compared to the risk that they are taking so that's it from my end i hope uh, you have got a fair understanding of the asset allocation how it happens about the today's market outlook what are the risks why do we feel that asset allocation is required and then about the schemes where we feel that these schemes can definitely help you to do asset allocation and generate good returns over a period of time so the performance was just so that you can understand that asset allocation might not mean that the returns would be very low it can it has the potential to beat pure equity benchmark over a long period of time and without taking the very very high risk so that's it from my end uh, if there are any questions i'll be more than happy to take thank you so much thank you thank you bhavesh okay uh, dear customer uh, we are uh, happy to uh, look if there is any questions and uh, we will answer for the uh, particular questions and happily we will answer the questions uh, you may type uh, the questions in the uh, question box dear customer we repeat uh, if you have any query related to this uh, presentation please type your questions in question box we will be happy to answer you so uh, bhavish we have one question that is with market already high do we see the return will continue at the similar rate so uh, right this is a question going on in the minds of many because uh, as soon as the market reaches a all time high we start wondering if it can continue the momentum or not and that is precisely the reason why we took this topic for the day Uh, about doing asset allocation especially when the markets are high so i wish you are not audible can you please check your uh, i mean mic equity especially in the small and mid cap space sips are a great way to navigate asset allocation is a super way to navigate so definitely you can uh, use any of the recommended products or ways to invest so talking about the return expectation from here we
should be expecting moderate kind of a return scenario rather than uh, a very high return scenario that we saw in the last five years. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Babish. Uh, so let me check if we have. Ravish, we have one more question. Can we name few good asset allocation MS? Ravish? Are there any more questions? which is doing currently so basically few of the customer wanted to know No, Bhavish, uh, am I audible? I can score looking different. So, dear customer, I think there is some uh, technical issues. So, uh, the last question was, can you name few uh, good asset allocations? So, basically, we do have a lot many uh, uh, funds, uh, basically, from different, different uh, AMCs. So, uh, you can just uh, look after those uh, mutual funds and you can be in touch with your relationship managers. Uh, they will definitely guide you for uh, further uh, assistance. Uh, if if there is no question, we can conclude this call. So thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Bhavish. Uh, if you can uh, hear me, so thanks everybody who has joined this call. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.